back in 2005, I um, contracted pneumonia. Um, and being the stubborn person that I was when I first became ill, I carried on and went on a three day camping trip with some of my students in the snow and camped in the snow, which obviously made that quite a lot worse. Um, was hospitalized at the end of the trip and pumped full of antibiotics. And then when I was discharged from hospital, I found that every time I ate, it um, created urgency. Immediately I needed to go to the toilet. It didn't matter what I ate, how healthy it was, how unhealthy it was. I didn't seem to be able to retain any food. Eventually it settled down, but then continued to, to kind of come back in waves, I suppose. And each time it came back, it got worse and worse. And so it took me nearly three years to go to the doctors because I was really embarrassed about sitting at the doctors and saying, I've got diarrhea and I can't eat. It felt similar to me, like going to the doctors with a cold that they would be dismissive and probably not listen. And uh, sadly for me, I waited until there was a lot of blood, convinced that it was something life threatening and eventually um, went to my doctor. Um, was sent immediately for a colonoscopy and on New Year's Eve in 2008 I was told that I had ulcerative colitis and he just said to me it won't kill you we'll manage it pull yourself together. And my worst nightmare was that I would end up with an ostomy bag. I thought I'd smell, I thought everybody would be able to see it and and to me it, it was something that was just completely impalatable as an idea. I met with the surgeon and he, he was lovely. He shook my hand the first time he met me and he said, because you have ulcerative colitis, I can cure you by taking out the organ. So uh, my surgeon and I decided that I would have a pan proctocolectomy and end ileostomy, which is when the entire large intestine, bowel, rectum and anus are removed completely. Small intestine is pulled through the stomach wall and stitched to the stomach wall and then an ileostomy bag is placed over the top. So this is an irreversible surgery and in the ileostomy community it's commonly referred to as having a Barbie bum that like on a Barbie doll there's literally no hole there anymore. There's no possibility of, of anything ever coming out there ever again. Initially it was difficult but I decided that I was going to name my stoma so we had a code word if we were out at, out for dinner or something and I there was a problem that I didn't have to, I suppose what this campaign's about, I didn't have to use the kind of language that if people at the next table overheard, they'd be like, oh, you know, look at me funny. So my stoma's called Summer, which I called her because that's a really positive word and a positive association. Um, so in my house, it'll be, you know, is Summer playing up or is she okay? kind of like a, a person of her own. I found that really helpful. So um, I am a lockdown runner. That finally gave me the time to start and I did my couch to 5K and then kind of kept going and kept going. And so in 2022 this year, I ran the London Landmarks Half for Bowel Research UK. And I think that that was really important because I think we live in a country where we don't like to talk about our bowels. And actually maybe if we talked about it more, more people might get to the doctors quicker, they might get treatment quicker and not suffer because it's really, really unpleasant having a disease, not only that gives you un discomfort and pain, but that makes you feel embarrassed. There's nothing quite like having something embarrassing that's with you all the time to impact your self-esteem, your mental health, your ability and the way that you look at, at, at yourself. And I decided that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I wasn't going to hide anymore and that it's nothing to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm.